Hey, I'm Tracy Burns here with Jim Cramer down on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange. Jim, busy weekend overseas. French elections, Brexit talks. What do you think? Look, I think that we've been buying a European uh, index play for uh, action alerts because we're so excited. There's, I think that this turn in Europe started a couple of years ago. I think France is ready. I think the French economy could be strong. People have just written it off. That's a mistake. You get some unity over there, it's good. Brexit, really hard to call. I still think that their interest rates have to go up uh, because they've got inflation. That's worrisome. Also oversees the Paris Air Show, Boeing. Boeing is it's just going up and up and up. I wonder if it doesn't sell off on how many orders they have. Although I do think they're going to have really great orders. The stock is almost at 200. Uh, if it does pop to 200, I would be a short-term seller. Long-term holders, just own it. But the hedge funds like to buy it ahead of the Paris Air Show, uh, and then they sell it on any news. That's just always been the trade. We go back to D.C. Jared Kushner, Donald Trump's uh, son-in-law, holding this big tech conference. You know, what do you hear? I, I thought it was very interesting that, that I, I think a lot of this is the cloud, and the government is only 3 to 4% on the cloud, which is really absurd. The amount of money saved on the cloud is usually $1 for, versus $4. Uh, so if the government wants to save a lot of money, they've got 6,000 data centers. That's completely insane. There, there is just a, I, I think this is, a, if they take this seriously, and get the government to be on the cloud, there will be billions of dollars saved. So I'm actually kind of bullish on what their goal is to do. Fingers crossed it happens. Uh, Speaking of DC, any thoughts on a Janet Yellen replacement? Uh, you know what, I, I, I am trying to figure out exactly who would be, you know, Gary Cohn is heading it up. I don't think Gary Cohn's gonna appoint himself. <laughs> um, but you know, th this is one where you look around and you say, you know what, there's some people who have been around for a long time and maybe they are interested. I, you, look, who do you want? You want a Jamie Dimon, he's not gonna take it. You look back and you take a look at some of the people who were a Republican statesman, it's been so long. Uh, I mean, Pulse is not gonna come back. So I've been trying to noodle on it, but I just, there's no obvious candidate at this very moment. Uh, there were not a lot of uh, very pronounced uh, Republican bankers. I wonder if he doesn't go, you know, reach a, a, someone in the Senate someone who is sophisticated about banking. But uh, right now, I, I, I think that they're devoid uh, of uh, people who would really be remarkably obvious, is the way I would put it. Market would go to the roof if Jamie Dimon came out of the oh, woodwork, of right? I mean, but I, Jamie, I think, loves, loves, loves his job. Uh, and, and I think that my core bat at City loves his job. Gorman loves his job. Uh, it might be interesting. Uh, there's a guy, you know. No, no. I'm, you know, it's just very, very d difficult to think about who might be in there, given the fact that uh, it, it's been, uh, let's say, uh, such a long time, and it was just this continuum of Bernanke to Yellen. Uh, you, you look, Jay Powell would be fabulous. I think Jay Powell is amazing. Uh, I could throw his hat in the ring. I could throw Bill Dudley's hat in the ring. Both of those men are terrific. All right, so today on the show, you were talking oil, gas, Cabot. Yeah, I mean, it's really interesting that you could have a very important deal uh, where you see EQT buy rice, the beginning of what I regard as a, uh, a much necessary consolidation. I would have thought the consolidation had more to do with oil. It's one of the reasons why we own Apache for Action Alert and Simerex, which has been very, your tr stock's troubled, business is doing great. But this is natural gas. This is Utica and Marcellus acreage, a very cheap, they're making money. I mean, one of the things I think people have to realize is you have a dollar twelve all in for the price of natural gas. You see, the price of natural gas is three bucks. You've got pipes coming to the east, pipes coming to the south. You already have some pipes in. Natural gas. Uh, what's happened is, is it used to be come in from the Gulf and go up to the northeast. Now it's going from the northeast to the Gulf, and that's mostly for manufacturing for export. And it's going to the east, and that's mostly for heating. Uh, and so it, uh, it, it's a cleaner burning fuel, obviously. This is, I felt, uh, the beginning. And the next one, if you wanted to buy low cost, would be Capital Oil and Gas, $10 billion company. Or maybe Capital Oil and Gas feels like they should do something. But I wish people would understand, I know that owning anything oil and gas has been the death knell right. for any fund. But this is an important deal. Everyone's overlooking it. Take a look at Capital Oil and Gas. Take a look at Southwestern. Uh, I'm not going to say Chesapeake because there's too many people in Chesapeake keep waiting for something to happen. But Chesapeake is a good company that needs a very cold winter. 
We got an Alibaba conference going on tomorrow. Yeah, I mean, David Faber's going to go. Um, Alibaba's a buy, period, end of story. I mean, I just think that, by the way, they do $20 billion in groceries. So think about what could happen with Amazon. They do $20 billion. And I think that Alibaba's a, is, uh, got the greatest growth of any large cap company, obviously, plus 40%. I think it's a great trading opportunity to buy Alibaba today. You have Lloyd Blankfein on tonight. Yes, and you know we're going to go pretty far-ranging with Lloyd, everything from uh, government intervention to uh, the way that we bounce back after the Great Recession, to the economy, to China, uh, to whether we, you know, whether investment banking, whether Goldman Sachs' business model. What does it mean? How do you get a premium multiple? Uh, would you work at Goldman now if you're coming out of school? I know Lloyd for many, many years. I want to talk about the culture of the place. I want to talk about government Sachs and what happened there and how when we joined Goldman, we were expected to do public service, and then suddenly it got a bad name, and now it looks like it's getting a good name again. Talk a little about Gary Cohn. We got a lot of things to talk about. We'll do two segments. We don't do two segments, but we're going to do it with Lloyd because he's such an important figure in the financial firmament. That is awesome. Everybody tune in to Mad Money tonight. Thank Jim, thank you. you.